Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm at the IFA 2018 Global Press Conference in Rome and I have here beside me Mr. Marek Maciejewski who is the Product Development Director Europe at TCL. Thanks for taking the time to join us. Your power briefing presentation was extremely impressive and I would like to think that your main focus is on Quantum Dot. Can you explain to our viewers why Quantum Dot is so important for TCL? Well, uh, Quantum Dot technology we uh, started uh, to develop in more or less 2014 with the first product uh, on the market in China and Europe in 2015. Why Quantum Dot? Uh, because uh, Quantum Dot is the only technology able to deliver color volume and uh, to deliver 100% of uh, color volume. And uh, to deliver sense of light and sense of colors, uh, we need uh, quantum dots. So today uh, we target DCI P3 uh, to be as close as possible to 100% on 2D, but also in color volume side. We have one product uh, doing it. And uh, the next step will be to target REC 2020 and to be able to deliver all the colors which can be reflected by the sun in natural light. Okay, now clearly in the top and TV market, the strongest competition to Quantum Dot these days is OLED, which is self-emissive. Now, do you have any thoughts about whether TCL will be joining the OLED camp or do you think that Quantum Dot is the way forward for your company? Well, I can say uh, we look on uh, self-emission screens, uh, but uh, self-emission screens which will be uh, based on quantum dots because uh, uh, today uh, current uh, white OLED technology generally is based on blue plus uh, yellow to create white and then uh, to use a color filter from LCD. And uh, we all know that this technology was developed in the 90s by Kodak and then uh, patents were later on uh, sold uh, to one company who masters uh, this technology. So uh, on our side, uh, we look on it, but generally we see that uh, self-emission uh, quantum dots, uh, quantum dot screens, either uh, uh, light driven or electrically driven uh, are the future. So this is uh, this will come step by step. It's very difficult to answer today exactly when, but this is our direction. Okay. In your power briefing presentation, I was also very impressed to see that you have actually put a color accuracy target in your presentation with regards to your quantum dot based QLED. I think you mentioned something that you are trying to target a delta error of less than one for SDR and a delta error of three for HDR. Can you explain the philosophy behind TCL's television with regards to color accuracy, picture processing and things like that? Uh, well, uh, here we talk about movie mode, the mode uh, in which uh, we exactly deliver standard. Uh, so if we look today on uh, white color gamut products, not even uh, quantum dot based products, so these products deliver much more than SDR. Uh, so that's why we are able to go with uh, average delta E uh, below one even for SDR products. So uh, logically quantum dot can also do it. Yes, because uh, color volume is uh, wider. Then uh, if we look on uh, HDR performance, so HDR10 uh, for example, uh, so this is uh, the same area because uh, uh, on the first uh, step we need color volume and on the next step uh, we can deliver uh, accuracy and uh, especially with DCI-P3 uh, mapping is important part but then is uh, not as important as for example when you try to map from uh, HDR to SDR screen. Uh, so on this one, uh, I think uh, we will try to send you some samples. You will be able also to assess on your side performance of these products. Okay, that'll be certainly be very interesting because at this moment in time, I don't think that TCL televisions are actually on sale in the UK. They are extremely popular in the USA and also in the rest of Europe. Now, can you explain if there are any differences in terms of the specifications, in terms of the target audience between, let's say, your products 
for the American and the European market? Well, uh, in Europe, uh, our focus product is Android TV. And uh, this product on this platform, uh, we do all the premium uh, products. So uh, with quantum dots and also with white color gamut. Then uh, in uh, US, uh, our platform is Roku TV platform. Uh, so uh, there are some technical differences uh, also on the chipset side. And uh, this is also linked to some uh, specification differences. Then uh, UK is uh, a bit more difficult or complicated area because Android TV for the time being uh, doesn't work well uh, in UK because of uh, content issues. Uh, and uh, in UK, uh, we do so this year we will introduce Linux-based smart TV products, which are Freeview Play uh, certified. So all the services will be in, and we will go also with uh, wide gamut products, but not uh, Quantum Dot for the time being. Okay, and another key difference between the American TCL televisions and also the European version, I'm not entirely sure on this because I'm not familiar with the specification, is the presence of Dolby Vision in the US version. Now, can you give us your thoughts on Dolby Vision, HDR10+, Plus, any metadata regards to HDR? Well, uh, you touch an uh, important subject, which is dynamic metadata. Uh, Dolby Vision uh, we do in US and we do in China. Uh, we don't do in Europe because of uh, some uh, technical limitations, let's call it this way. So it's uh, more related to technical solution we use. Uh, then uh, I think uh, Dolby Vision should come uh, with the next uh, year products uh, based on Android. Uh, this is uh, the target uh, we go, we move. Uh, and uh, coming back to HDR10+, Plus, okay, we look on the market and uh, how the market will evolve, uh, what kind of content will be available, uh, and then we will decide if it makes sense to go this direction or with dynamic metadata we should uh, only stay with Dolby Vision where content is available, or maybe we should even go uh, wider way and uh, consider other technologies. So for the time being we do HDR10, we do HLG in all the uh, UHD products, uh, then uh, Dolby Vision is the next step uh, for next year uh, in Android TV and then uh, for other technologies, let's see. Okay. Again, because from what you're saying, the UK is not going to get a quantum dot based television. What can UK viewers look forward to in terms of, let's say, h lit lighting, direct lit lighting, full early local dimming, DCI-P3 coverage, peak brightness? Can they look forward to something decent? Uh, well, so in fact, uh, what we will do in the UK this year, uh, we will have uh, three product ranges. Uh, the first one will be sRGB and uh, Freeview Play uh, range. Then the next step will be uh, Super Slim Edge uh, DCI P3. I think at something like 95% uh, with uh, brightness uh, reaching, I think, in peak something like 400 nits. And then uh, the top product uh, will be even slimmer and with fully laminated uh, front cover, so it will look like a glass. Uh, then the, based on the same platform, and then I think also meeting 96% of uh, DCI-P3 coverage with brightness going in peak, I think, to about 400 nits, uh, 450, 500. So this is more or less uh, direction. Then uh, the top range will have uh, built-in soundbar, so uh, front firing speed together with uh, JBL and the products uh, below will have down firing uh, sound. One main observation of the TCL televisions in Europe is that you are mainly using 60 Hz panel instead of 120 Hz panel. Can you explain the reason why? Well, uh, if you go deeper into product ranges, so you might find uh, 120 Hz panels in products like 75 inch or in selected 65 inch products. 
But uh, if we look uh, on the strategy to raise TCL brand, uh, we go from mainstream UHD area and then we go up and uh, 100 hertz native is uh, super premium, let's call it this way. It's very high price point. Uh, so first we have we want to be 100% sure that uh, we uh, we have strong position on uh, entry and premium uh, products, which are uh, 50 hertz products. And then uh, we fully control uh, specific price points and then we can go above with uh, uh, top range now one final question is that i think at this ifa 2018 global press conference there has been some talk about 8k and things like that where do you see the industry heading in the resolution direction or better pixels hdr and things like that well, you know, uh, 8K is logical step. Uh, so uh, everything, uh, I think, uh, started from uh, Full HD uh, several years ago, and Full HD was targeting 42-inch uh, screen. Then UHD more or less targets 65-inch, 75-inch. Uh, and then logical step is uh, 8K to target uh, larger screen sizes. But uh, if you look on UHD, so in fact, the production principle is 55 degrees. Uh, so the screen is larger, you come closer to the screen. The same will happen with 8K production principle because uh, it will go up to 100 uh, degrees or even more. So you really you need a large screen and have to be close to the screen. On another side, if we look on content, so content will come, I think, in 220 or even later because uh, because we need UHD2 specification for it. Today we master UHD1 uh, and then with uh, phase 2 uh, UHD UHD one where we have UHD resolution HDR uh, high frame rate next generation audio uh, so we have all these technologies logical step is the next step with 8K and as I said during presentation there are three major steps sense of light and colors uh, sense of uh, being there and sense of looking through the window 8K will give the sense but everything is step by step okay I actually just thought of another topic that just cropped out I said last question but this is really the last question I believe that I read somewhere that TCL has a printed OLED solution in the works is that can you explain more about it or is that totally wrong well, you know, uh, there are uh, announcements and then uh, there are uh, proposals done on our side to create, uh, uh, to work with companies uh, to uh, work on uh, uh, printed uh, QLED, let's call it this way. So the concept is to be able to print uh, QLED uh, screens. Uh, then, okay, as I said uh, today, generally some panel uh, factory decisions you have to take 10 years before uh, you uh, look on the market, on maturity, yes? Because our uh, Gen 8.5, uh, in fact, we started planning uh, 10 years ago. It took us, uh, if I count well, if I, uh, yes, four to five years to make it happen. Uh, but generally, you have to really look of uh, next five years. So then, today, Yes, there are there are R&D works which are ongoing. Uh, we do presentations on uh, OLED uh, forums, OLED uh, uh, meetings, uh, and so on. And then uh, we look on uh, technologies uh, which we can deliver uh, to different products. To clarify, are we talking about OLED or? QLED here or just an OLED base with quantum dot, you know, well, filter in front. As I said, as I said, there are many ways uh, to deliver uh, color. So mm -hmm. then you can drive quantum dots with the uh, light. Mm -hmm. So you have light stimulation. Then you can create a blue light uh, backplane. Let's call it this way. Mm -hmm. Then blue light goes through and then you generate uh, red and green. The only issue is uh, how to ensure that uh, of lifetime of blue uh, source for coming from organic uh, uh, materials. Then another one is to go go uh, in organic way. Uh, so then uh, you have the story of microLED. Yes, uh, in this case. And so then, and then the last uh, point is uh, to drive electrically quantum dots, so to generate all the colors separately by uh, uh, electrical way. So then, as you 
I think see from uh, announcements coming from different brands uh, who are focused on quantum dots, uh, they all work on it to master this technology and they all believe that uh, uh, it is a matter of the future. But today it's very difficult to, for me to answer the question, yes, that in two years or in three years you will have it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Marek, for taking the time to speak with us. I think you've been a great source of knowledge with regards to TCL's product strategy, at least in the UK. So I really look forward to seeing some TCL TVs in the market in the UK sometime later this year. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thank you.